Extraction Protocol is the new short film from FX Home. Uh, we put it together to show off exactly what hit film can do, and we wanted to show you a little glimpse behind the scenes at how it got put together. My name's Simon Jones, I directed Extraction Protocol, which is the new short film that we just released on the FX Home Hit Film channel. I'm the communications manager here, so everything to do with the community and interacting with all the channels on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and the blog on the websites, that's all my handiwork there. Uh, and these new short films were kind of a, a new way of exploring what our software can do. Before I worked at FX Home, filmmaking was kind of my passion. Uh, it's what I studied, and then I found myself working for a software company. But it was a software company that actually makes software for filmmakers, so it's kind of a nice match. Um, but the good thing about having filmmakers who work here, because you know we've got people in the web development team who also are filmmakers, it gives a kind of unique perspective on the stuff that we're making. Okay, twenty-five, take three, please. Like. Um, the idea initially was to make some new short films that would show off hit film. Uh, it was really new software at the time and we needed something which we could really get our teeth into. Uh, and rather than just doing individual little shots here and there, we wanted to do slightly bigger projects where it would be more of a short film uh, with a little story and that kind of stuff. Um, at the time, the Deus Ex Human Revolution game had just come out and it's a great game and packed full of really cool visuals and all sorts of stuff. And uh, as I was playing it, I was thinking, actually, you could do a lot of this stuff in here, film. We had all sorts of bits and pieces to uh, play with. We had some really nice new cameras, the Sony NX something or other. I can't remember what it is. Ross will probably tell you in a different interview somewhere. Um, and we were trying out some new camera equipment as well. We had a really nice dolly, which we just got from Tube Tape. Um, this is a kind of really configurable dolly where you can mix and match different pieces depending on what you're doing. You can lay tracks down or you can just have wheels. Uh, that worked really nicely. We had that for a couple of shots. Uh, the opening shot, in fact, tracking along, as we see, the cityscape, that was done on that. Okay, uh, we're just setting up this new shot, which is going to be the opening shot of this particular one. Uh, we're going to try a few variants because we're trying to do quite an ambitious visual effects shot, but sometimes in these cases you're not quite sure how they're all going to turn out. So we're going to do three versions with kind of varying difficulty. Uh, this is a very hard move because I have to pan, tilt and focus at the same time. Mark also has to push the dolly at a constant speed, whilst Dan has to move the cable uh, whilst we're pushing the dolly. Uh, and get out of the way of the shot at the end, so it's a very complex, very hard move. And then we thought, well, let's just try this one where we're tracking down on the dolly and we're moving the camera around from the side and we've got Chris walking along. Um, and let's see if we can put a big cityscape in. And when I was shooting it, I wasn't really sure if it was going to work, if we'd have enough to track off and that kind of stuff. Um, so the fact that it did work, and actually worked surprisingly simply, was really good. <laughs> We had a big fancy jib, which didn't actually survive the first shot, so had to kind of reconfigure some of our storyboard in there, because, you know, the whole, the initial vision for the thing was to have very, very smooth shots all the way through, um, so almost a very kind of clinical look to it. Um, but the jib, with its lovely smooth movement, was going to be quite integral to that. When that uh, decided to self-destruct, we then had to kind of rethink the look of the film, which is why it ended up going down more of the handheld route, I guess. Um, but that was actually quite good because the handheld route gave us an extra challenge in post because obviously you have to match all your visual effects to the moving camera. Um, and that was something that in our previous software you couldn't really have done. Forwards, look at those dirty marks, keep moving. That is a lovely shot, Ross. Yeah, I'm very wide But those lights will have to go wider. We're, we're ready, ready, mate. It's looking nice. This sequence is probably the most complicated one we're doing today because it's in lots of different pieces. Um, you have to make sure you've got every single bit so that when you come to the compositing, you've got like, your clean background plate, you've got your green screen element, you've got your live action bit. I like it. <laughs> so 
It's not an ideal green screen at all. What we would normally recommend is that you have a good distance between your talent, who's going to be standing on this table, and the green screen. This distance is no good at all. The problems with this is that it doesn't allow us to light the green screen separately to the talent. We've got a bunch of lights around us here. As you can see, I'm casting a shadow on that. It's not going to be great. It's not going to be terrible. As long as you can get some light, maybe on quite a narrow angle from the green screen and light it separately, we're going to be trying to do that. Do, like you said, do them really high, but further away, that might work. Of course, HitFilm is excellent at green screening, so even though we're going to have some shadow problems and we're going to have some wrinkles in this green screen, HitFilm is going to clean that up and it's going to be a perfect key. Dan is in the Dan is the. We want green over Dan. Have someone spot that light just on yes. the off chance. Of course. Course. I'll then board it. Yep, that's fine. Okay, rehearsal jump. Hi, my name is Chris Burdett. I've been helping with the costume wrangling for this shoot. Um, most of the kits that we're using is based on police riot armour, um, which already looks slightly sort of futuristic and high tech, so it's actually perfect for using in a Deus Ex style shoot. <laughs> right, I'm going to go get super glue. Thank you. Yeah, this is a lot easier when you're not sitting on a sofa. I like the demands. Hold my eyes. Hold my eyes. My eyes, my eyes. Clip on my blade. Currently just sticking the uh, the eyepieces onto the side of my head. Uh, there's also glue underneath my eye. Um, with the lenses in at the moment. The lenses they're gonna have to come out in a few shots, so we can take the lenses out and then they'll be glued back onto my head again. <laughs> okay, roll cameras. Roll it. Okay, take seven. Okay, go Chris as soon as you can. <laughs> We decided to shoot it in one day, and it turns out that shooting a kind of action-focused piece in a single day is probably not a great idea, um, but we managed to get it all done on schedule, but it was very, very rapid shooting. I was really pushing Ross, our DP, to get the shots as quickly as possible, and we were kind of working with the weather as well, because we are in England, and uh, the rain just bucketed down at certain points, so you have to work around that. So here we are on location. As you can see, it started to rain. This is going to cause no problems whatsoever because we scheduled things really precisely to a, <laughs> avoid incidents like this. <laughs> uh, producer Tom over here, uh, he sorted all that out. Yep. He's also commander of the weather. So Simon isn't worried. None of us are worried. It's all going to be fine. Yeah, so this is the invisibility cloaking effect, which we did a few weeks back, but this is kind of a much more advanced version of it. We've got two takes. We've got one with the actor walking past, and then we did another take without the actor. Uh, we tried to match the shots as closely as we could, but obviously without something on like expensive motion control, that's not actually going to happen. Uh, but for this particular effect, it's fine because the displacement on the invisibility kind of hides the differences. And all you need is that clean plate so that you've got a version without the actor. And then once you composite them all together, it looks really nice. I guess the effects work took a good couple of weeks, solid work, I suppose, to get done. Um, that was mostly because it was just one person doing it. Um, but HitFilm kind of performed really nicely because it was the biggest thing I've done personally in HitFilm since the software has existed. Uh, so it's always a bit of an unknown quantity, you don't know what you're getting into. Uh, but every shot, it just kind of breezed through it, no problems whatsoever. Uh, mixed in a bit of PF Ho for the tracking. Uh, the opening shot was done PF Ho for the track. Bring that into HitFilm, putting all the buildings, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it all mixes together really nicely. Um, but it didn't really have any major problems. Um, in post, it all, all went very smoothly. So we've just been doing our main green screen shoot, which forms lots of different pieces in the film. Uh, one aspect is the x-ray vision shots, so we film lots of plates just looking at walls where apparently nothing's happening, but we've shot the x-ray parts here, which will then be composited in, so we've got our main guy who can see through walls. Uh, we've also shot one of the final sequences against this green screen, which will then composite into this actual room. This will be our main location for the rest of the scene, uh, for when the guy gets killed as the uh, hero comes through the wall. We had a composer called Michael Powell, who I'd not worked with before, who did an amazing job, uh, worked really, really quickly. I gave him a whole bunch of notes. I have no musical skill whatsoever, so I just kind of randomly try and explain what I'm talking about, and he interpreted that into music, which was really impressive. Uh, and he really got the feel of the piece, and it's a film which relies a lot on music. It kind of drives forward the pacing, uh, and I was really pleased with how that came out. It, uh, it holds everything together, kind of binds it all. <laughs> Thank you.
something else that worked out really nicely is the um, the arm blades at the end, uh, because they were actual practical pieces that we made. Uh, Nigel Clegg designed a lot of our props and costumes and did a really good job on those. They kind of fixed onto the forearms and uh, worked really nicely. And even though they're only in it for you know a couple of seconds, probably I think it's quite an unexpected uh, thing to happen. And uh, it was one of the bits from the game that I really wanted to get into because you do it a lot in the game, just going around elbow stabbing people, which is great fun. I think it all came together fairly well. If you look at the initial storyboards, the finished film is pretty close to those storyboards, and probably the closest I've ever got. Usually, you know, you script it, you storyboard it, you film it and edit it, and the edit is a long, long way from the initial draft of the script and even from the storyboards, because the storyboards are kind of a guide rather than, you know, this is what the film has to be. Uh, and practicalities on the day tend to stop you from doing what you actually want to do, or you have to change the shot around slightly, but in the case of Extraction Protocol, the storyboards do kind of match the finished piece, uh, which is really great. Um, and that was probably the most important thing in terms of the whole production, which was planning it. Because we only had one day to shoot, we had to know exactly what we were doing in what order, make sure we get all the pieces. So for an effect shot, you have to make sure you get you know three different green screen plates with different actors, a background, a sky plate, all this kind of stuff. Um, but because we had it all broken down in nice Excel spreadsheets and storyboards and everywhere, it all kind of went exactly as planned, uh, which on a film shoot is fairly rare. So, yeah. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed the film, and uh, we'll be doing more of this stuff later in the year. Uh, keep an eye on the channel and subscribe if you like seeing this kind of thing.